Welcome back to Financial Therapy. It's not just about the money. I'm personal financial planner, columnist, and financial therapist, Rick Kaler. Research tells us that 90% of all financial decisions are made emotionally, not logically. For nearly four decades, I've been helping people make better money decisions. So what makes my financial worldview different from most financial experts? I blend the nuts and bolts of financial advice with the emotions that drive making them. Good money decisions are not just about the money. So let's get started with today's episode. Thanks for joining me for another episode. One of the most widely adopted parts of the work that I have done with the Klontzes and in our co-authored books on money and emotions, financial therapy, have been the concept of money scripts. I remember the call when Brad or Ted said, you know, why don't we call these thoughts and beliefs that people have money scripts? And never knew how widely used that term will become in financial therapy, financial life planning. It's kind of become a pretty ubiquitous term. We've talked about money scripts on the podcast before. And just to summarize, they're unconscious beliefs about money that we embrace and view as true, typically pretty anchored in the more that a money script has never always is in it, the more ingrained it is. A money script is on its way to modification or has been modified. We'll have words like may, might, can, could sometimes in them, which probably means there's some flexibility built in. So it's those money scripts that are absolutely true to us that we really want to pay attention to. And most of us have 50 to 200 of these scripts that operate 24-7. They impact every financial decision we make. And they start off being unconscious until we take time to bring them into our consciousness. They form typically in childhood in response to events and experiences, financial traumas, to help us cope. And as we mature and life circumstances change, a lot of our money scripts don't. They don't adapt. They don't change. So it's kind of like the script that works well in one play. And when we hold firmly to that script and we change plays, all sorts of mayhem will ensue. So We can become locked into thinking and reacting to money as adults in the same manner that we did as a child or when we were teenagers. And money scripts are just behind a whole lot, I would say almost every hurtful financial behavior that doesn't serve us well, causes us pain and suffering. So I'm often asked whether I'm doing a workshop on money scripts or an interview. How can we change these? How can we change our money scripts? And what I have found through the years is some of us can change our money scripts. And of course, if we change the money script, we're probably going to change the hurtful behavior, right? Just from discovering, becoming aware that we even have the money script. And sometimes this is enough to where we can say, oh, wow, I see why that made sense back in my childhood. It doesn't make any sense anymore. And I see why I am behaving in the manner I am financially. So great, I will change. It's kind of like somebody who's overspending. The cure is simple, spend less. So I'll drop a budget and put it into action and shazam, the problem is solved. So in 20% of the time, this is enough to change behavior. But most of the time, a money script is so deeply anchored from trauma and unfinished business and difficult emotions that it can't be changed no matter how hard we try to think ourselves to a new behavior. If most overspending was cognitive and could be changed with more information, I don't think we'd be a nation of overspenders and undersavers. Most of us know that we 
can't spend more than we receive. So why do we continue to do it? Something that seems so illogical, even though we, quote, know better, it doesn't change. And that's when the money script is anchored deeply. And the, every money script is completely logical, no matter how illogical it seems to us or other people, when we understand it, we understand where it came from. And, that, you know, every behavior makes sense when we understand the money script. So how can you change a money script that's anchored in the past? And I was thinking about this. I was reminded by Dr. Jacob Needleman, who is author of Money and the Meaning of Life, published that in 1994. He spoke to the FPA retreat in 2008. And he suggested that one of the first places to begin building good money skills is to examine all the opinions you have about money. Now, he didn't know about money scripts per se, but money scripts are opinions, right? And he compared our beliefs about money to an antique store, where occasionally you find a priceless treasure, but most of it is filled with junk. He said, basically, we need to open the contents of our minds and examine our opinions and beliefs about money. Asking each one, how did you get in here? And uh, I began thinking about that. And then with the work that I am doing and learning with internal family systems, I thought, you know, that would be something I think each of us could do, apart from being in financial therapy to address our money scripts. We could have an interview with the parts of ourselves that hold these various beliefs. And heretofore, when somebody says, well, how do you change your money scripts? I've just said, you know, Really, I think you probably need to look at getting into financial therapy. And I still think that is the best way to address them. But I thought maybe I could develop a tool that would help people start this dialogue of exploration with the parts of themselves that hold these these money scripts. So what I have for you today is an internal interview of that you can use with the various parts of yourself that believes uh, various money scripts and begin this process of really understanding where they come from, what the good intention was behind the money script, which can be a first step in potentially taking in some new information and modifying the money script. So I thought it'd be interesting to go through this exercise today and I'm actually going to lead you through it. And so you can turn this tape on or off as we do it. I'll try and give you some time so maybe you don't have to do that. Or you could go along with me and write down responses that you have. Of course, since this is a tape, you can play it back. (laughs) So maybe it would be good just to go through it mentally first and If something comes up you want to capture, you can do that afterwards or you can go back through it and write down the questions and your responses to it. So I would ask you to just think about a money script that you have that just seems absolutely true to you. And it can be almost any money script. If you want to find one easily, talked about the KMSI Clots Money Script Inventory-R. I think a lot of you have taken that. So if you've taken it, just go back, find your KMSI-R, and look down the money scripts. And if there's a money script that you have as a 6, that you rated 6 on 1 to 6, that's a probably a pretty firmly entrenched money script. If you don't have any 6s, go for 5s. And you just may be aware of a money script showing up in your life. I did this recently with one of my GGU students that had a money script that they would be a nervous wreck if they didn't have an emergency account. So for a good money vigilant, (laughs) a lot of them could say, how could that possibly not be true? So whatever is a really true money script to you, get that in your mind. And You can close your eyes if you'd like, whatever works for you. Begin focusing on 
that firmly held that really true money script that you have. Maybe take a deep breath or two. And if you're sitting, you know, just feel your feet on the floor, firmly in the seat, or maybe you want to lie down on the floor or the ground. And just let everything else go, that particular money script. Whatever it is, just would invite you to repeat it, just repeat it slowly, over and over. And if you can, you may have parts of yourself that are kind of arguing with you, how can you leave that money script, or maybe maybe there's a part of you that don't think it's true, but it sure feels like it. Just try and have those critical parts of yourself, just relax. And if you can, just suspend judgment, if it's really hard to focus on that money script. But if it's really, really true to you, it may not be hard at all. There may be no judgment except the resolute judgment it's true. And even to that, I would invite you to become curious if this money script really is. And just to be open, to open your heart in being open to examining being open to learning more how this money script got in there in Jacob Needleman's terms. And as you do this, see if you can separate yourself from the money script. What do I mean by that? Well, it's realizing that you are not this money script, that this money script is a part of you. There's a part of you that believes this money script. And so another way you can do this is just ask that part of you just to step back a little bit, just to give a little bit of room, recognizing that it's not you, that it's a part. And so in that way, just allow yourself to become curious about this part of you that believes this money script. And again, really focus on this part of you and just notice where in your body is this part located, or in or around. It may not even be in your body. It may be near you. Are there any sensations associated with this part? Are there any emotions as you focus on this part and its money script, are there any emotions that come up? Emotions are one word, feelings, fear, anger, sensations. Do you feel tightness or heat or, you know, what's the texture of the sensation? And are there any images as you focus on this part that has this money script? Are there any images? that come to mind. So whatever is coming up, stay with that for a moment. Curiosity, just extending your curiosity to this part of yourself that has this money script. It's okay. Allow it to share its emotions with you around this money script. Just let all of this Develop. And when you're ready, ask this part of you that believes this money script what the circumstances were, what the situation was when the money script first appeared. And if the part of you doesn't know, that's okay. Maybe ask it how long has it believed this money script. Maybe who it heard this money script from in your past. Just hanging out with that part of you. Let it tell you the story, how this money script was formed. Maybe ask the part how it's been believing this this money script. Has it been easy? Has it been hard? When you're ready, ask this part of you, what was its in believing this money script. 
What did this part hope it would accomplish? Hope what would happen in believing this, this money script? What was the good intention of this part of you in adopting this money script? So search for that good intention because our money scripts are always adopted with the best of intention with the best intention of a, a good outcome. And if it's necessary, keep dialoguing with this part about its the story around its hopes, the story around its good intention, the story of what believing this money script would create. And then when you're ready, ask the part, what are its fears? this money script wasn't true? What was its fear if this money script wasn't followed? What what would its fear be if the opposite would be true? And keep drilling down on the fear as it comes up with a fear. Ask it, and what would you fear about that? And if that happens, what would you fear about that? Just really get to know the fear around if this money script isn't true. You might even ask the part, if this money script wasn't true, how would it be for the part? Would it, is the part tired of enforcing this money script? Or what would happen if this money script wasn't? Then when you're ready, ask this part of you if there's anything else that you need to know about this money script. Anything else that it would like you to know, that it would like to tell you. So, if you want to continue the discussion, maybe you want to turn me off right now. Come back to this. But we'll say goodbye to the part and thank it. Thank it for everything that it shared with you, thank it for its good intentions, and then when you're ready, let's come on back. So this is an exercise that you can do multiple times on multiple money scripts. I have found that most people learn something about their money scripts after doing this exercise that they were never aware of before. And that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> How many times? You take a time out in adulthood. We spend, what did we spend? Five or ten minutes just pondering. Where did this one money script? And so this is a really condensed version of an exercise that I have used with my financial therapy clients. to Begin to really sort out and get to know where money scripts come from, what their origins are. And this can begin a process of modifying. And if you had some feelings come up, some difficult feelings, painful feelings, and IFS speak, these are usually real tender parts, real vulnerable parts of ourselves. That the part that has the money script is trying to protect. The part that has the money script is wanting to make sure that it doesn't feel that vulnerability or that trauma parts of us that were traumatized. So money scripts are usually adapted to protect our vulnerabilities, to protect our unfinished business. And there is a way for us to interview those really tender parts of ourselves, those vulnerable parts that were wounded, and help them resolve extreme beliefs so that they can be freed from extreme beliefs. And our systems can start functioning more wholly, more helpfully, more functionally around money. So again, this was just a little taster, a little teaser of what it's like to really start getting to know the origins of your money scripts. Some of this work is work you could take to your financial therapist. You could take to... And 
IFS session if you do IFS and further explore where the money scripts are going and begin to modify those money scripts. So I hope this was helpful to you. It's something I never recorded, so I have written a column on it, and I'm sure that it will begin to morph and change over time, but I do hope that it's been helpful. So thanks for joining me. Again, I appreciate your emails and comments. You can always reach out to me at rick at rickkaler.com. So take care. Thanks for joining me, Rick Kaler, for another episode of Financial Therapy. It's not just about the money. This is where I combine the nuts and bolts of financial advice with the emotions that drive making them. Remember, every financial behavior, whether it appears illogical to you or others, makes perfect sense when we understand the underlying beliefs, feelings, and thoughts. Sign up for my weekly blog at financialawakenings.com. I hope you'll join me again for our next episode.